Oh, hey everyone, welcome to the weekly update. This is what it's like to be here right before the wall comes down and we start to expand the store. There's so much stuff that you can see that's coming in so that we can have kind of this new presence for you guys and kind of spread people out a little bit more just for normal social distancing. So yeah, we're knee deep in pallets of stuff we're trying to go through right now. But it's time for the weekly update, so I'm going to stop what I'm doing and we're going to get right into it. One of the things that I'd like to show you to start things off is the new ATO by eShops. We haven't stocked this yet. Um, we have a couple different sizes, but if you have a reservoir or sump type system and you need an auto top off uh, to, to just kind of keep things going with the tank, this is a great one. And this is again from eShops, which is one of the companies we love the most when it comes to aquarium sump design, skimmers, things like that. There are a lot of small tanks that have come in and a lot of nano tanks. A lot of rimless tanks, desktop type tanks, and things like that. And whether you're watching or not, we have tank tip videos and we have the Fish, Fish Biz 101, which is our beginners type of classes, so to speak, that we have on YouTube that we're trying to teach a younger audience about simple type aquarium keeping. All that to say is that I wanted to show you a little bit what the tank tips videos are like and I'm gonna to cut to that now and let you see a little bit about aquarium design on a very, very small scale. Today, I wanna to talk about uh, a very simple tank tip, so to speak. Normally, I love to do advanced decorating ideas and things like that. You've seen some of the more elaborate things that I've done on the earlier tank tip videos. Today, I wanna to talk about simplistic design in a small nano tank. So that's all we're gonna focus on is how you can have a very simple design in a very simple typed desktop tank. Uh, and what I've done for this is I've chosen a couple different tanks and I wanted to show you just a couple of different design ideas or thoughts. And you can kind of get an idea of how simple it is to take a very, very small space and make something really creative and cool out of it. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so I've taken a couple different tanks that I've just pulled randomly. There's all kind of sizes these days in every type of design. What I've done is taken a simple 6-gallon, a 10-gallon, a 3-gallon, and a 1-gallon. Especially just to show you how much you can do with very little water and very little mass, period. And I've taken a couple different, this is a rimless and this is the new Edgelet by Aquion. One of the tanks, the six gallon Edgelet, I wanted to show you just because it is lit around the bottom edges. There's no top, it's just an open top type design where you can do whatever you want to with the light coming from the bottom. Very simple, very low key. Uh, I would use this for a type of Anubius, like with live plants or even plastic plants in a very simple design. This is just a simple rimless tank, which I'm gonna put a light on top of and just show you a simplistic design with it. And I wanted to also show you where you can see this little edge lit, which is just a one gallon box. It does have a top if you choose to use it. It is lit around the bottom edges. Rather than a slow motion video, I wanted to show you what I did with just this one simple box for a beta. It's kind of cool because you can see it's open on the top. There's live plants that I have in here. This has been set up for a, about two weeks and we put plant gravel in there. You can see the beta as well. While we're not huge proponents of small beta tanks, we do like them to have as much space as, as they can. This makes a great little tank for something that doesn't need a whole lot. And in any space, in any corner of any room, this little one gallon box is kind of cool. That's just showing you what you can do with a one gallon tank. This, I would like you to see simple box, not much to it, but here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a really cool piece of driftwood like this. We're gonna focus all the attention on one part of the tank. I'm gonna take some sand. Simple, clip on LED light. There are all kinds of filters and things that you can use for these smaller tanks. We're finding that while not the best over filtration, 
These are great little filters to sit in the back corner of many of the small tanks where you would want an internal filter and not having very much on the back. This is a Quiet Flow 20 from Aquion for this particular tank, depending on what I was going to put in it. And in this tank, I would probably do shrimp. This would be the perfect filter to kind of hide somewhere, probably behind my rock work in here, or somewhere kind of off in the corner where there's not very much hanging off. But as you can see, it's just a very, very simplistic design, not much to it, but with a few well-placed live plants, some water, you're off and running. Okay, so the Aquion Edge Lit. Um, very simple design in this as well, but I wanted you to see how the edge is lit. It's really cool. It has its own little, little mini stand that it actually props itself up on the table, but very cool because of how it's viewed. I'm gonna do something super ultra simple in this thing, but I want you to see how unlimited you are to an internal tank design, because especially with the lighting and not having to have the top, with some fluval stratum gravel, and I would be doing this primarily for shrimp, uh, really, really, really small tetras, things like that, or maybe even a species only type. And I grabbed two pieces, of driftwood and the way that I would actually use these or utilize these rather is very similar to something like that where you can see if you come up close that it's not touching the bottom at all it's really kind of cool because it's almost like a submerged tree trunk when you're actually looking inside the aquarium uh, a couple well-placed plants just to give it a three-dimensional effect but the fish can swim up under it and all around it, you can move it because your lighting's already established. I've also done this piece if you want something that's a little more elaborate. And I don't really mean super elaborate, but something where you could actually take a small air plant, put it on one of these corners, but again, it's suspended, it's very light, so you're not harming the glass at all. It's actually being suspended in the water but it's kind of coming around the tank. And I like this design just because it broadens the size of the tank a little bit, but also when you see the fish, they're up underneath this part that you see right here. Uh, plants, it gives it some kind of a lift that I think is kind of cool and kind of different. So these are just a couple things I wanted to show you because we do talk about nano tanks a lot because there's so many things you can do with them. Certainly, there's other ways to filter these. There's all kind of different things that you can do. But I just wanted to show you a couple very simplistic, creative ways to take a small tank and do something with it that will heighten and kind of bring beauty to some little spot or corner on your desk, office, coffee table, whatever it would be. Okay, so let's take a quick look at what fresh water came in this week. A lot of cool things came in. I'm gonna start here with the Farowellas. Farowellas are an elongated algae eater that are really cool. They almost look like a gar fish that has been molded into a catfish. Uh, they are an algae eater. They get pretty long in an aquarium, but they're really, really cool to look at and something different. I also got in these albino hopolo marble catfish right here. They don't get any bigger than what you see here. They're a, they're a dwarf type catfish. They are beautiful. Check out the pics right here. I also got in some panda loaches. Loaches are great for eating algae and stuff like that on the tank as well. Uh, these have great color just because of the stripes. Uh, very, very cool little fish right there. One of my favorite fish, and I harped on this a couple of weeks ago, are the bloodfin uh, tetras. reason I like them so much is there's such a simplistic contrast between this crimson red color that you see on the fins and the actual fish itself. So if you get a good group of them and you put them in a planted aquarium and they start to school, they really, really pop in an aquarium. So something that only has one type of color but it's centralized, once you put that color in a school, you can really, really, really make a beautiful looking fish tank with those fish. Uh, right here, I also have the long fin tiger barbs. These are great because they too have these elongated fins and it's, there's a lot of extra red pop in a fish that already has a great green and red contrast. 
right over here, I got in some normal blue Acaras in. Not the electric blues, but the normal Acaras. This is a this is a type of dwarf cichlid that is not so aggressive. Doesn't mean that it won't attack very, very small fish, but if you have a, a, a nippy little community tank, these can be great for them. I'm gonna harp on rainbow fish every week just because they're an awesome fish that I love. You can do so many things with them. They're so hardy, they have so much color. These are the Madagascar rainbow fish. They have a kind of an elongated, more compact body style for rainbows. But as you can see them swimming with these turquoise rainbows and the Bosmanis, they're just phenomenal, phenomenal fish. I have one of my favorite fish, the Emperor Tetra. If a Tetra could look gothic, this would be the gothic te Tetra. It has kind of a pitchfork tail on the caudal uh, with this black stripe through it and these glowing gold eyes. It is a beautiful fish that, that is very gothic looking. <laughs> I love it, I love it. Right over here, we got in a lot of really nice African cichlids this week in a lot of different colors. If I had more time in the video, we could go through all the different species, but you're just gonna have to look at some of these colors and come see us. One other thing I wanna mention, we have some beautiful, beautiful tiger Oscars that came in today. I uh, don't have a lot of them, it looks like maybe six of them, but they have great weight, they have great color, and they're in great shape. So they look really well for just being out of the bag. A couple other things I'd like to mention. One is we have a very big plant order, live plant order coming in this weekend. It will actually be here on Friday. Kara's gonna kind of get all that worked out for you. You will notice that the way she's doing the plants, she is actually writing a lot of information about each plant on the tank. So even when you're in here and there's not one of us immediately available, you can kind of see the difference between the light contrast for different types of plants. You want to pay special attention to that. And speaking of Kara, let's go to her real quick and get an update on this baby discus. Hey guys, it's Kara. I'm giving you another update on our baby discus. I have moved them out to where the public can see them. They are a little over a month now and they're doing great. As you can see by what I've written on the tank here, they'll be for sale when they reach the size of this circle, which may be around June or July. I'm hoping for June. And also the parents laid eggs again, which I'll show you guys now. So we're expecting another round of babies. And they also eat flake, which is awesome. All right, jumping right into salt water, I want you to pay very close attention to one of the prettiest fish in the Atlantic Ocean, the Queen Angel. This is a beautiful, beautiful fish, and while not reef safe, it is about as pretty as any angelfish gets. The lemon yellows and the, the bright, bright blue crown on her head, just incredible. We also got in what I think is her counterpart, the yin and yang for the Atlantic Ocean, and that is the gorgeous French angel. If brown and grays and a little bit of yellow in a color fish could be prominent, dominant, and beautiful, the French angel definitely takes the cake. I also got in a beautiful naso tang this week. It's one of the quickest sellers for us. Uh, we usually sell out of them pretty quick, but I got in another one. As you can see, the girth on the fish is about like that. It is absolutely beautiful, fantastic looking fish. I also got in one of the rarest groupers that we stock, the Polini grouper that you can see right here. Uh, this is a phenomenal grouper. It is as colorful, I think, as most groupers get. Definitely on par with the Miniatus grouper. And rounding the corner, I got a beautiful blue angel. You can notice the slight difference between this angel and the queen. This is also an Atlantic angel. And you can see this little guy is following my finger, and he's only been in here for a few hours. But uh, very alert and active, which you always want to see in a fish you're buying. Not skittish and scared. The, uh, the, the blue angel does not have the, the crescent crown like the queen does. That's the main difference. There are a few subtle differences, but the color is about the same. I also got in a baby blue, and I got in the long-nosed hawkfish. This is a great fish, as all hawkfish don't have swim bladders, so they have to hop everywhere they go in a tank. This adds to the personality of the fish because it's not a fish that stays in constant motion. It's a fish that kind of rests and watches kind of what's going on, including the person that owns the aquarium. So let's run in the back and see some of the other things that came in in the invert section. Okay, so back in the invert room, I got in some beautiful purple firefish. I love firefish because they just add this soft, beautiful quality to a lot of tanks. They kind of keep to themselves. They're extremely peaceful. Uh, but a very, very beautiful small fish to have 
even with other gobies and blennies. I also got in, and you can see them from there, these gorgeous red Atlantic serpent stars. Uh, if you want a starfish that looks like an octopus, that looks like a starfish, these guys are great. And they really put on a show when they come out in the tank. Orange chestnut snails. If you got to have snails in your tank, orange chestnuts are a pretty cool way to have them. We got in lots of starfish, lots of anemones. Uh, there's lots of hermit crabs. There's lots of arrow crabs, Sally Lightfoot crabs, uh, coral banded shrimp. I still don't have any cleaner shrimp in yet. I'm working on that right now. Could have some by the weekend, probably gonna be next week. And before I forget, because I'm in this room, a quick sidebar, we got in some, shush, I can never say it. Just, I still can't say it. This word, that, we got in these kinds of koi. Every time it comes out as a cuss word, so. Uh, these are a blue species of koi, shishui, I think, is the best way to say it. Uh, these have a strong blue contrast on their back when you see them from looking down. Uh, you can even see the patterns on the side of the fish now, but this really makes its statement in your pond when they come to the surface. We haven't had a lot of blue koi in the last couple of years, and we had one last week, and I've got a couple this week. I also am trying to get a few more in because they really put on a show. So yeah, that's what's happening with fresh and salt water. Okay, I hope all of that would gave you a general overview of what's happening here at Fishy Business on some level and what has happened today. We have a lot of stuff coming your way as we're bringing on our normal camera guy for a more permanent type position. So all the feedback I got back last week seem to say that you guys want to see more of what it is that we do here in more situations in fishy business. That's going to start next week. So I would tell you to start watching your YouTube almost every day for updates or subscribe, check in with us, watch Facebook for the YouTube updates, and we will start showing you pieces of what we're doing here all the time, whether it's service, whether it's how we service aquariums in here and just what the normal day is like for us. I'm going to get back to work. As you can see, there is a lot to work on. I wish you all a great weekend, a great week. Be safe. God bless.